quickly, let's go back to this. So these are the hormones, and make sure you know these functions. Is that right? These are important. I think uh, you should know that. And then um, that's what we talked about last time. Here they're just telling you how the hormones and receptor cells work. Uh, parathyroid, uh, thyroid uh, whole gland, I did talk about it. Parathyroid, I did talk about it. There are two different glands. Thyroid gland and parathyroid gland, they are, the parathyroids are in the back of the thyroid gland. I hope you, there, are four, there are four parathyroids and then one thyroid gland. So you do not have slide of parathyroid in your slide collection. You do have slide of thyroid gland in your slide collection. Here is a greater, back in 1930s, uh, a lot of Americans had this. Uh, enlargement of thyroid gland because of lack of iodine. So what happens when there's not enough iodine in the diet, uh, this, uh, this gland can become enlarged, it's called Twitter. And then uh, what happened, United States government in 1930s, they issued a law that uh, uh, something that everybody eats, salt and bread, those two things. And the, the manufacturer, whoever makes salts, whoever makes bread, have to add, add iodine to it. It doesn't matter from what culture you are, uh, you eat salt. It doesn't matter what culture you are, you eat bread. So they added to those, and then pretty soon uh, it went away. The, the winter uh, went away. Here's the thyroid line, we talked about it. Simple, uh, simple tuboidal epithelial tissue, thyroglobulin. Uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, here is um, the uh, vitamin D3 is responsible uh, with and parathyroid for our bone formation. <coughs> and nowadays, vitamin D3, vitamin D in general, is getting a lot of attention. The reason I put that up, yes, you should know this diagram a little bit. Uh, but, uh, and then, of course, the, the calcitonin and parathyroid, we talked about this, right? I talked about it earlier in the lab. Uh, what happens, the calcitonin they will pick up the calcium from blood vessels and then put it in the bone, and parathyroid break down bone, and calcium is released into the blood vessels, and that's what happens pretty much so. Uh, and, of course, everything goes together with the small intestine, absorbing vitamin D and calcium and the kidney, dispersing it, and so on and so forth. Um, one thing that I, uh, I wanted to say, you know, it does not come to me anymore. Uh, what are you? Oh, vitamin D, thank you. Thank you so much. Vitamin D, it is so funny. Back in 1990s, it was, you're supposed to take vitamin C. The papers came out, uh, Louis, what was his name? I'm forgetting now. He said, keep vitamin C, and a lot of people start taking vitamin C. Then, back in uh, early 2000 or 2000, it was vitamin E. Papers came out, scientific papers came out, take vitamin E, you must know they, they don't recommend it anymore because they saw a lot of cancer occurring by taking vitamin D. And now, they're saying vitamin D. You're supposed to take vitamin D because you're not exposed to sun, um, your body does not make it, uh, so you have to have it in diet if you go to the stores. 20 years ago, you guys don't remember, 30 years ago, you would not see any vitamin D uh, on the shelves. I do not see it, but now everywhere I go, here's vitamin D, 1,000 units, 2,000 units, and then um, they check you, the doctors check you for your vitamin D, see if you have enough vitamin D in you or not. So I guess every decade, they come up with a new thing. It was vitamin C first, then vitamin E, and now vitamin D. What knows the next one? Maybe next decade is vitamin K. Um, so anyhow. K L M O P. I know why it is. Okay, adrenal gland. Okay, I, they are on, the, on top of your kidney, and in the lab you study the three layers of them, three zones: zona glomerulosa, reticularis, fasciculata, and then this is adrenal medulla. And here they are. This is pretty much. And not some goals, I would like you to know about, uh, uh, about the, uh, the hormones of the adrenal gland. Very important gland. Uh, when they remove people's kidney, of course, this got to go with the two. Uh, the uh, people's kidney 
whatever reason they have to remove one of them or two of them, uh, the adrenal gland goes to. Okay. So, but again, these hormones can be taken with just like thyroid gland. Some people, uh, because of the cancer they have or something, they remove thyroid gland. Then you take calcitonin or parathyroid or whatever thyroid gland uh, secretes by the pills. They supplement it with pills. Same thing here. As your gland goes, then other, um, uh, you know, you have to take it by pills. Uh, the uh, cortisol hormone, they are steroid hormone, adrenal cortex uh, makes that hormone, A, B, C, D, I gave it to you. These are the hormones I'm hoping you would know. And then uh, the hormones of adrenal gland is uh, fight or flight, fight of adrenaline. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of this. Uh, football players doing a football game or basketball players, whatever, or people who go to a war in a dangerous situation, there's a lot of adrenaline secreted in your body, and it comes from your uh, adrenal uh, medulla. Of course, your neurotransmitters also can, uh, the neurons can secrete adrenaline. So adrenaline is both a neurotransmitter and a hormone. And I give you the definition of a hormone. A hormone is a chemical uh, compound, uh, is an organic chemical compound that, see, uh, that affects another gland or affects some part of the body. And that's what pretty much a, a definition of a hormone is. So you have a genome gland, fight or flight uh, situation. I don't know if you've heard about it or not, but if you have not heard about fight or flight, it means you are in a situation that either you have to stay and fight or you better run, flight, fly away. That's what they call it, fight or flight. Uh, Tony, it's SM219. Okay, so they call it fight or flight, so you stay and either fight, and then while you're staying and fighting, a lot of adrenaline is secreted, okay? While you're running away from the fight, a lot of adrenaline is also secreted. That's why they call that hormone fight. Another name for it is epinephrine, um, fight or flight. The other hormone that counterbalance, if your heartbeat is high, your breakdown of glucose molecule is high, all of those are high, the person will die. It cannot go on for a long time, for a short period of time, four or five minutes, 10 minutes in most cases. And then what happens there is another uh, hormone is really secreted is called noradrenaline, which counterbalance the adrenaline. It has a counter effect on the body as it relaxes your heart, it breaks down, uh, the breakdown of glycogen slow down, and so on and so forth. I hope I'm making some sense. And those, both of them, comes from your uh, adrenal medulla and the uh, adrenal gland. Okay, so. Uh, the other three, A, B, C, D, that I mentioned, it comes from the cortex layer, the cortex layer of your adrenal gland. Here is adrenal gland, zona uh, glomerulosa, zona reticularis, the cell trunk, uh, like a column, and then, uh, I'm sorry, zona uh, fasciculata, sorry about that. Zona fasciculata, the, the, the cells run like a column, and then zona uh, reticularis descent, and then the cells runs like a vein perpendicular to the zona um, the fasciculata. And then finally, you can see the difference of the staining between adrenal medulla and the cortex layer. All of the cortex layer pick up more stain, and they are uh, darker stain than the adrenal medulla. Here is a pancreas. As we talked about it before, pancreas, there are two hormones that you should know about pancreas. One of them is insulin and uh, glucagon. The alpha cells uh, produce glucagon and beta cells uh, make uh, insulin. And I talked about insulin. Insulin is a um, facilitator. It facilitates absorption of glucose into the cells. That's pretty much what in a function of insulin is. Insulin allows sugar molecule to be to get, to get access into the cell, the cells of the body, primarily muscle and uh, liver. Those are the two main storage houses for glucose molecule, and then glucose molecule it's called it is. Glycogen. 
glycogen is many, you learned this in biology one, many glucose molecules attached together. Okay, that's what glycogen is. And then, uh, uh, of course, insulin allows entering those into the cells. Intake of glucose into the cells. And then, of course, liver has the enzymes put the glucose molecules together. Here it is, Islas of Langerhans, and this is exocrine SNI. And what's else? Insulin and glucagon, the uh, balance glucose level uh, in the blood. We talked about it. Insulin lowers the glucose level in the blood after you ate breakfast or lunch. Right now, you ate lunch, you came to the class. Right now, the level of sugar in your blood is high. And then what's happening, the level of insulin goes high too. To facilitate absorption of these sugar molecules, the glucose molecules, into the cells of the body, liver, muscle, they, get, they become glycogen in there. All of the glucose molecules you have for lunch. Okay. So uh, that's what he said. And they balance the blood, insulin lowers the uh, level in the blood, lowers the glucose level of blood, and the glucagon by four or five o'clock, you become hungry again. That's when glycogen is released and goes to the cells of the body and breaks down glycogen. Glucagon is released, it goes to the cells of the body, breaks down glycogen. I know the terms are a little bit close to each other, but sit down at home, figure it out for yourself, and I'll be more than happy to go over it with you in the lab. So increase the uh, breakdown of uh, glycogen and then um, glucose level in the blood. And that's the end of the material for this exam. Does anybody have any question? Is there anything I can explain it on the whiteboard? Yes, please. Uh, is go ahead. Do you uh, like talk about the immune system? Talk about the immune system. You, you, okay, so you want me to go over humoral immune response. Is that pretty much what you want me to talk about? Because the cellular immune response, based on what you have, what we talked about, oh, there's a lot of monkeys here. Okay, okay. okay. so uh, so, um, so if you have an antigen, something in your body that cause synthesis of antibody. It's called antigen. So you have these antigens, and then you have a uh, cell in your body right here. It's called, what is it? Antigen. Um, can I write down AG? Antigen. Recognize. I wrote down antigen once, so AG. And antigen presenting what? Macrophage. Macrophage. Okay, so what happens, this is the nucleus. So what happens, this guy, this guy makes a molecule called interleukin right here. Interleukin goes, sits on another cell which this is called the T helper cell, right? So an intruder came here. I am the one who picks up the phone and, right, the phone is the, the message that I'm sending to the dispatcher, Delta Cal College campus dispatcher is T helper cell, right? Delta College campus uh, dispatcher does not come and arrest that person. Do I make sense so far? I want it straight. So, of course, there is uh, maybe dispatcher uh, radio to a policeman, right? Shout the college police. And that's another interleukin. I hope I'm making some sense. And then eventually, the cell that is responsible in a factory that makes the handcuff is called B cells. B cells is the factory for making the antibodies, right? B cells make the antibodies. I hope I'm making some sense so far. 
So these antibodies will attach to the antigen like that. And then after that, what happens is a cell right here that. So this is your antigen, same antigen, Ag. Of course, this time you have what attached to it? Antibodies. Antibodies. Right? And then what is the name of that cell? The phagocytic macrophage. Phagocytic. I have a question. They eat it, and this will go, hang on, hang on, I'm not finishing. This goes, the AG goes inside of the cell by phagocytosis, and this portion is called cellular immune response. Of course, this is all humoral immune response. This is cellular immune response. So they go together. And it goes inside of the cell, and the cell has lysosome biology one, right? Lysosome will break that antigen. Does it make sense? Yeah. Um, it's more clear compared to what? Yes, Ruben. Uh, what about a cellular humoral cellular response? Isn't that when the antigen presenting macrophage uh, phagocytizes the uh, antigen, or is that when the phagocytic macrophage does that? Cellular immune response, yeah. right here. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Uh, could you go over nutrition? The what? Nutrition. When you guys take physiology, it is a lot more uh, than what I am presenting to you here. There are three functions of um, kidney. Uh, one of them is filtration, one of them is absorption, and the other one is secretion. I didn't mention those at all in your uh, zoology notes, right? But you take, you take physiology, each one of those, they will talk about it, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, what happens during filtration, what happens during absorption, what happens during secretion. None of that here. I hope you're not confusing your physiology notes with your zoology notes. Your zoology notes are much, much, much narrower. Okay, I don't expect you to know all of that, all of that information for just this one exam. Because we, through the rest of the semester, we have to do all this stuff. Okay, so what happens as far as you ask me for filtration, so I'm not going to talk about uh, the passage of the blood in the kidney. So let me just talk about filtration as you ask for. Here's glomerulus, it's just a capillary that is folded like that. That's your glomerulus, okay? And then outside of glomerulus, you have this Bowman capsule right here. So uh, glomerulus, and then Bowman's capsule. Right? And then what happens, the pressure here, pressure in the glomerulus is high, high pressure. What does that mean? The blood is circulating here very rapidly, for example, okay? And the pressure here, low pressure. Do I make sense so far? So what happens, small molecules Small molecules, they seep out. They go here, small molecules. Large molecules stay here. Do I make sense? Small molecules seep out, and they go to Bowman's capsule. Now, in Bowman's capsule, you have, and that's it, filtration up there. And then what is in Bowman's capsule right here, now it is called filtrate. Filtrate is plasma 
minus large molecules. It has small molecules. Plasma plus, how about that? Plasma plus um, small molecules. Well, plasma has large molecules and so on and so forth. But this one, uh, filtrate, is uh, plasma minus large molecules. It has small molecules. And then this filtrate goes down the loop of Henley, right? From loop of Henley goes to, uh, 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 this is proximal convoluted tubules. This is distal, right? Distance away from glomerulus. Distal convoluted tubule. And then from here, it goes to collecting duct. And then uh, minor calyx, major calyx, renal pelvis. So right here, uh, a lot of urine comes in, urea, sorry. Urea comes in, and by the time you get to uh, collecting duct, uh, then finally you start having formation of the actual um, urine. How, yes. how does uh, the liver convert uh, urea, ammonia into urea? They have their own enzymes. I didn't go into details of it again. In physiology, they might go over to details of it. How does it? Uh, how does liver convert urea, uh, ammonia okay, to so urea? So when you're asking how urine and urea is being made, just kind of explain this. No, no, that's not what I want. I want what I want that in the liver. Yeah, amino acids. Or um, you have um, nitrogenous bases. You know what I'm talking about, nitrogenous bases. You, you learn it. Uh, uh, oh, what is what are the nitrogenous bases? Ammonia and derivatives. No. Uh, uh, the purines and pyrimidines. You remember pyrimidines have one ring, and what are they? Can you, you give me a generic name? Huh? Yeah, but what are they? Adenine, guanine. guanine. Adenine, thank you. My mind goes blank sometimes, sorry about that, too much coffee. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil, that's what I'm talking about, nitrogenous bases. So they have ammonia group, they have nitrogen. Okay, so not the ammonia group, but they have nitrogen, sorry about that. So what happens, these guys can, your liver, can turn them into ammonia. Okay, so ammonia is NH3. And then what happens, ammonia is very toxic, your, uh, your liver converted to urea, which is less toxic now. And then urea by blood is transported to kidney. And kidney, of course, dismantle it, add it to the field trade, and out to the uh, body. That's what I'm. Uh, but that's what I mean when I ask how does they are as the amino acid nitrogenous bases. The liver has the enzymes, the arrows are enzymes to convert them to ammonia, and ammonia is converted to urea again in the liver. Right? I hope I, I ironed that out pretty good. It's a spotless iron, no wrinkles in there. Yes? Uh, how do you want us to explain the, the urinary system? Uh, urinary system, so you have two kidneys, right? And then inside the kidney you have a renal, uh, you have the cortex layer, and uh, uh, the medulla layer, and then, uh, you know, after filtration occurs, then it goes from you know, Bowman's capsule, uh, talking about filtration, goes to proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henry, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct, from collecting duct to minor calyx, major calyx, and from, and we have it on a model, a minor calyx, major calyx, 
to uh, renal pelvis, and from renal pelvis, today in the lab, I thought that's medulla for whatever reason. And then from renal pelvis goes to ureter, from ureter to bladder, from bladder to urethra. That's what I want you to do. Center, uh, central pathway of energy metabolism. Okay, what do you need to know about that? What is the question about that? <coughs> I need to know the question. Is that going to be the slide that has going back and forth? Is that what do you want me to redraw it? Or you want no, no, if that's what you're looking for, is that slide kind of thing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm so looking at number, number 31. It says, what is right. the central pathway of energy metabolism? Okay, that's the one I have the PowerPoints for you. Is that right? I think so. I'm just confirming um, that it's that one. Well, again, th this is some of the information from Bio 1, but uh, I had one student say that near Bio 1, I took it a long time ago. What is it? I said, don't worry about it. Most of the things in Bio 1, it is a request for this class. It gets you ready, your mind uh, gets ready. Uh, but again, most of the things in Bio 1, um, I will refresh your memory, like this one. So for lunch, breakfast, whatever, you had a lot of carbohydrates, is that right? Carbohydrates, they break down to glucose, right? Glucose breaks down to uh, pyruvate. Pyruvate breaks down to acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA to electron, transport, chain, we call it ETC. That's what ETC stands for, electron transport chain. However, in this cycle, make sure you know pyruvate, two pyruvates can be put together by the cells of your body and make glucose. Glucose, right now, if you had lunch, are being put together and make glycogen, right? You all know this from bio one. Also, in bio one, you learn that protein molecules, right, they break down to amino acids. This is it, this is your citric acid cycle right here. Electron transport chain, another name for it is citric acid cycle. Another name for it is Krebs cycle. Three, four names for the same thing, right here. So amino acids, what happens, they can become, some of them, some, I should say some. Some amino acids can become pyruvate, right? And what do they lose? Ammonium. Pyruvate can become some amino acids. What do they need? The pyruvate needs what? Ammonia to be amino acids to be made. Do that make sense, everybody? And who does do this job for you in your body? Liver. Liver. Thank you. And then you have some amino acids. Some amino acids. They can become acetyl CoA. Can acetyl CoA become amino acid? No. no, absolutely not. Can acetyl CoA become pyruvate? No. no, absolutely not. Then you have some amino acids, they can become intermediates of electron transport chain. Intermediates of electron transport chain can become amino acids too, right? Uh, Hershey, yes. Then, what happens with fat? You had breakfast, you had fat, lunch, you had fat. Oh, we're eating all three of them together. Uh, but I will not tell you something. Maybe when I'm off the video, if you remind me, because I don't want to get into trouble. But I'll tell you when I was uh, exiting. The Tennessee, I was getting out of Tennessee. Uh, one of the questions they asked me, uh, the committee, there are five committee members, uh, they asked me this question, and I came up with the answer, but I cannot share it with you guys unless you turn off the video.
and I shared it with you. But anyhow, fat, they break down to uh, um, triglyceride. And I do not follow that medicine. I do not follow it because it's too hard. But anyhow, triglyceride, what happened, uh, it breaks down to glycerol. A glycerol, thank you. To glycerol. Glycerol is three carbons, just like that. Of course, it has hydrogen, so on and so forth. And attached to it, a fatty acid. And what is the name of that molecule? This is a fatty acid. It's called what? Monoglyceride, thank you. It's called monoglyceride. If there are two of them attached, diglyceride. And if three of them attached, Triglyceride. Triglyceride. So that glycerol breaks down to fatty acid. I should have spelled it for the first time. Yes. Fatty acid. So it breaks in your body, your intestine can break. The glycerol can become pyruvate. Pyruvate can become glycerol. Right? Fatty acids, they become two carbon fragment. So these long chain of fatty acids, right? right? All of that, that's a chain. They're usually even numbers. The fatty acids in uh, usually Mother Nature make them, they're most of them are even numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example. The body breaks down to two carbon fragments. It breaks down to two carbon fragments. It breaks it down to two carbon fragments. These two carbon fragments can become acetyl CoA. And acetyl CoA can become the two carbon fragments, and they can become fatty acids. These can become fatty acids, and fatty acids can become triglycerides. Do it make sense so far? Okay. The question that I like to ask during the exam: I will not ask you to draw this one. You can. But I would ask Amir, he does not eat protein in his diet or anything. I can choose any of it. He does not eat protein in his diet. He always eats carbohydrates and fat. And he still does not lose any weight. Why? Because he have to have to be Number one, he does not do exercise. So all of the carbohydrates he's eating, it does not go through because he does not exercise. It does not go through this route. So what happens, it becomes acid, it becomes pyruvate, pyruvate becomes glycerol, glycerol becomes portion of triglyceride, all of that carbohydrates become an acetyl CoA, acetyl CoA, lose the CoA, lose CoA, and becomes what? Two carbon fragments, two carbon fragments are put together, become fatty acids, fatty acids are deposited in the fat cells. And if he's eating fat and not exercising, if he's exercising, look, he's exercising, he's exercising, he's exercising, boom. He's not exercising, he's not exercising, boom, he's eating fat. He's not exercising, boom. All of those fat are being deposited fat cells. He is exercising, boom. He's exercising, boom. He's not exercising anymore. He was exercising, boom. And boom. Do I make sense? Uh, 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 Wesley, did I answer your question a little? Yes, thank you. Aisha. How is the calcium level being regulated? I don't know. You guys know the answer. You're testing me, I guess. Does he know his stuff? Or he hides behind his PowerPoint? I think that's what you guys are doing. Um, you know. I can either confirm or deny that Dean wanted me to test you. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, today would be a good day for evaluation. They come and evaluate me. So. Um, okay, calcium level, you guys. Um, again, it's this. What am I saying is different than when you have a little baby at home. Uh, this happens in the little baby. You have a ten-year-old. Five-year-old, uh, fifteen-year-old. Um, then some textbooks say that's the age stops. I'm disagreeing. I think I'm showing you those textbooks. But anyhow, I think twenty-five is the age that stops it growing. Am I making some sense? This is not it. 
the term that I use in the exam, I think you should be familiar with it, uh, ossification. Ossification means your bone, your cartilage is becoming bone. I want to make you some sense. But this is not it. This is not ossification. This is called bone remodeling. That's the textbooks use it. Okay, so what happens during bone remodeling, you have your bone right here, and inside of your bones you have the calcium deposits, right? And then you have phosphorus as well. So what happens, your thyroid gland, your thyroid gland secretes the hormone um, uh, calcitonin, And calcitonin is blood vessel right here attached to bones, as you know. It takes, it lowers, it, there's calcium inside of your blood vessels, right? It takes calcium from blood vessels and put it into the bone. Deposit it there, how about that? That's what calcitonin does. Okay, then you have another gland called para thyroid gland. And parathyroid gland secretes the hormone, and I will go over the cells here in a minute, secretes the hormone, uh, parathyroid hormone. Okay, release parathyroid hormone, and it goes to the bone and causes the release of calcium from bone. And where does this calcium go? It goes into blood vessels. Do I make sense so far? So what causes the calcium to break down in the bone is the name of the cell osteoclast. Okay, osteo means bone, class means breakdown. Okay, and the name of the cells in the bone that makes up bone. So remember, bones are your bones are constantly are being breaking down and being built up. That's what they call it, bone remodeling. Constantly break down and build up. You, me, a hundred-year-old man or woman. It's happening in everyone.